Welcome to Electra Online. So in the previous video, we saw that the Earth goes through tremendous climate changes, far, far greater, tremendously greater than the things that we're experiencing today in this last century. And so you can see that there must be a reason why this is happening. And let's now explore those reasons. The main culprit of those reasons is Jupiter. But let me explain. So currently, Today, as we can say, we have our summers, or let's say here, no, this is our winter, so let me go back and try to explain that there's a big difference between whether or not summer and winter happens in the northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere, because the vast majority of the land mass is currently in the northern hemisphere. So when winter occurs in the northern hemisphere, it has a much greater effect on the climate of the whole world than winter occurs in the southern hemisphere, where it's almost completely ocean, with just a few exceptions. And so the temperature difference average for the world, for the entire Earth, between summer and winter, and we we'll say summer and winter for the northern hemisphere, is as much as 7 degrees Celsius. There's a 7 degrees Celsius difference between the average temperature when the, the northern hemisphere has winter versus the northern hemisphere has summer. And so even though if it's winter in the northern hemisphere, it is summer in the southern hemisphere and the other way around, the total average temperature goes through tremendous changes on a year-to-year year -year basis. So the Northern Hemisphere is what controls the climate, in a way, of the entire world. So here, today, this is what we currently call the Northern Hemisphere summer, because the Earth is tilted towards the Sun in the summertime, and here we can say that it's the Northern Hemisphere winter, because it's tilted away from the Sun in the wintertime. So sure enough, it is warm on the Northern Hemisphere here, and it's cold in the Northern Hemisphere there. But that's not where it stops. You also have to remember that the Earth has an elliptical orbit, and it turns out that currently we're closer to the Sun when it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere, and we're farther away from the Sun when it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere. The result of that is that our winters are relatively mild because we're closer to the Sun, and we receive about 6% more energy from the Sun during the wintertime than during the summertime, because here we're farther away, and therefore we receive less energy so since we're farther away, we have cool summers. What about the length of winter and summer? Well, according to Kepler, we travel faster around the sun when we're close to the sun, and we travel slower when we're farther away. That's the second law of Kepler. And so our winters, therefore, are shorter because we travel faster when we're close to the sun, and our summers are longer because we travel slower. So longer summers, shorter winters, warmer winters because we're close to the sun and this is when we have a very mild climate that is why we're currently in that interglacial period with very nice temperatures but it's not going to stay that way because in about 11,000 years the earth will now be tilted in the opposite direction it's already beginning to go in that direction so it takes about 13,000 years but since already several thousand years into this process the earth actually it wobbles like a top. Since it spins on its axis every 24 hours, it causes the Earth to wobble, and the actual tilt of the Earth is constantly changing. Every 26,000 years, the actual tilt makes one complete circle. So in about 13,000 years, or from now about 11,000 years from now, because we've already started this process, the Earth will be tilted in the opposite direction, so the northern hemisphere will experience winter here, and will experience summer there. Since we're now farther away from the sun, we receive 6% less energy from the sun, and we spend more time far away because now we're traveling slower, so we'll have much colder and much longer winters. We'll have warmer summers, but shorter summers. And so therefore, the climate will be very different. It will be much colder on the Earth when that happens. And that's probably why we'll tend to go back to the next ice age. But to make things worse, we have this big planet in our solar system, which is called Jupiter, and it turns out that every time the world goes around the Sun, the Earth goes around the Sun, when Jupiter and the Earth are on the same side of the Sun, Jupiter's gravitational force tugs a little bit on the Earth. And when it does it at the right time, what happens to the orbit of the Earth, it becomes more elliptical, which means that the Earth will be farther from the Sun at one point and closer to the Sun on the other point. 
If that happens when we're in this situation here, where we're far away from the sun, when we're when it's winter, when we're far away from the sun like this, because we're tilted away from the sun, and we're far away from the sun in this way, because we now have a much more elongated orbit, a much more elliptical orbit, the ellipticity is much greater, then we may receive as much as 20% less sunlight during our winter time, and our winters will last much, much longer, because we'll be traveling much, much slower when we're far away from the sun, and our summers, even though they'll be hot, relatively speaking, they'll be very short, because we'll be traveling really fast. During this period, temperatures will plummet, ice will build up, and large parts of the world will be covered with huge ice sheets again, with ocean levels as much as 400 feet lower than they are today, and millions of square miles of our northern hemisphere covered under thick sheets of ice, just like what we had experienced not more than 20,000 years ago. So this is going to start again, and there really isn't anything we can do about it, because when we receive that much less sunlight, for these long periods when we have these bitter cold winters, the Ice Age will return. It's not if they will return, it's simply when will they return. In addition to that, the Earth's tilt also varies. It's not, it doesn't stay at the constant 23 and a half degrees that it currently is. It changes from 21 to 25 degrees. And when it's 25 degrees, on top of this situation, we then have an ex extended result but in other words, it will even get colder than that because during our winters we're tilted farther away from the sun and the northern hemisphere will get even colder. So when all these things pile up on top of each other, that's when we drop back to the next ice age. It's just a matter of time for that to happen and that's why we have these huge fluctuations in our climate. It is going to get bitter cold again. It's just a question of when will this start. So, is it, it's yes. also further away from the sun, why is it summer? So the tilt, so the question is, we're farther away from the sun, why is it summer in this location? And it's because we are tilted towards the sun so that the northern hemisphere receives much more direct sunlight than the sun hemisphere because it's like even the south pole there doesn't receive any sun at all and it, it goes completely dark and the temperatures just plummet during the winter time. So the tilt is what controls summer or winter. But if we're far away from the sun during our summertime, we'll have mild or cool summers. When we're close to the sun in the wintertime, we'll have mild winters. So right now we have mild summers, but they're long, and mild winters, and they're short. But doesn't that go around the sun once a year? Right, so this happens over and over again. That's why we go from summer to fall to winter to spring to summer and so forth. Yeah, then that's why we have cool summers, because we're farther away. So when that changes to here, where we're close to the sun in our summer, then we have short but hot summers. So it has nothing to do with the distance to the sun, it's only the tilt? So the, the season is only due to the tilt. The coolness or warmness of the season depends upon if you're close or far away. Yeah. So we're tilted to the sun, that will be summer. We're tilted away from the sun, that will be winter in the northern hemisphere. But since we're close to the sun, it'll be a hot, short summer, because we'll move fast. But it's hot because we're close, but we'll have bitter, cold, long winters because we're tilted away from the sun in the wintertime, and we're far yeah, away. because you're so much further away from the sun. So yes, we receive about 6% less energy between winter and summer, because we're farther away. But it's still summer because yeah, the, the, we're the, tilted yeah, towards. Tilt versus the distance. The tilt is a, such a small distance compared to the distance between the sun and the earth. Oh, I see your question. So you're wondering, since we're tilted away from the sun, are we farther away? So the tilt has nothing to do with the distance. It's simply the way the light approaches the surface of the earth. And where you're tilted away from the earth, like it's wintertime in the northern hemisphere right now, so the days are short and we don't receive as much light because of the tilt. And that makes a huge difference. That's why it's winter in the North Hemisphere. So the tilt is what controls the seasons, period. And, and the distance away from the sun, because the tilt is, is minuscule compared to the distance away from the sun because of the ellipticity of the orbit. This seems weird. 
It does seem weird and most people, especially they don't think about this aspect. So you really have to show it like this graphically to begin to realize, wow, I didn't realize that the huge changes in the climate are due to the ellipticity of the orbit and that's due to the Jupiter pulling on the, on the Earth and that causes the ellipticity of the Earth to constantly change. No, the, the distance has nothing to do with it. It's this distance right here that matters. So this distance, we're talking about 148 million kilometers, and we're just talking about 1,000 a, a kilometers farther okay, because you're tilted. Summer, since you're about a thousand kilometers versus That's nothing compared to millions of kilometers. So the difference is 3 million kilometers. You're 3 million kilometers further away here than here, and we're talking about 1,000 kilometers because of the tilt, so that's nothing. Which is nothing compared to millions of kilometers. Yeah, but then shouldn't that be the summer then? No, because you're tilted away. With other words, this part of the world right here receives no sun at all. It's completely dark in the wintertime. Yeah, I'm not talking about the top part. I'm talking about. And here, you receive almost no sun. No, okay, what about right between them? Right. So, the, the equator is like this, so it's, it's this part of the world, 22 and a half degree, or 23 and a half degrees below the equator that receives the sun directly. So now it's summer in the sun hemisphere and it's wind in the northern hemisphere because you receive almost no sun. So if I draw it bigger like this, so here's the world, here's the axis, here's the sunlight coming in this way, right? And here's the equator. So you can see that this part of the world receives the sunlight directly, so it's nice and warm. And this part of the world receives it at a, at a very sharp angle, so we receive just a little bit of... So this sun right here is distributed over a much greater distance, where here, this much sun is distributed over a much smaller area, I should say, this, I should say area. So that's why it's dispersed, and that's why it's so much cooler over there. Yeah, but you're just that much closer to the sun, so you be getting that much more energy or heat? So, so, the, so definitely, whoa, my cap fell off. So definitely, uh, when we're like this, this is the Northern Hemisphere winter, so we're much closer, we're three million, three million kilometers closer to the sun than we are in the summertime, so we receive more energy, but it's distributed over a much greater region, so it's still, it's a milder winter. Right now we're experiencing mild winters. Don't talk, about, don't talk to the people in Siberia, because it's minus 72 in Amyakon right now. Many cities in Siberia are like minus 60 degrees, so it still gets cold, but wait another few thousand years and we're talking about minus 100 over there. So those, a few million kilometers doesn't make up for the... A few million kilometers closer make it for mild winters, but also short winters because we travel much faster during that period of time. <laughs> <laughs> Good questions, though. But yeah, it's, it's mysterious, but this is it. This is why the Ice Ages occur. They're known as the Milinkovitch Cycles, and um, yes, we are going back to another Ice Age. It's just a matter of time. <laughs>